Hi, I'm Chris Gallagher, pastor at Reno First UMC, and on behalf of our congregation and staff, I couldn't be more thrilled to welcome you to our 2020 Digital Sweet Vibrations concert series. Like all of you, the coronavirus pandemic has required a lot of adjustments for the church. We want to keep everyone safe and healthy, and as a church, we believe it's our spiritual prerogative to do so, but we couldn't stand the idea of not bringing you the same magical musical performances we've been so blessed to host for the last 20 plus years. Music has incredible power to heal, to comfort, to connect, and to inspire. What could be more important when we're all isolated in our homes? We greatly appreciate the lengths our artists have gone to to perform and to share these amazing performances with us, all while doing their best to maintain healthy physical distance. Every artist has done this in a slightly different way. Our artists tonight have adopted the cohort model of physical distancing limiting their number from the original larger ensemble to just 10 people and restricting social interactions to just this particular group while doing regular health checks. They've also been rehearsing in the sanctuary twice a week in order to be able to spread out as much as possible. They arrived with masks, they wore masks during their performance unless they were playing a wind instrument and they departed with masks. Even the people with glasses reading music through the fog of their own breath we're super disciplined and consistent and we're grateful. At no point during their recording session did they come within six feet of any of our texts. This is especially impressive because the air conditioner was broken during their rehearsals and recording. They wore masks and long sleeves while doing their arms and back workout in a sanctuary sometimes reaching 85 degrees. Because our church property has been closed to the public, they were able to take off their masks to share their stories with you and still honor Governor Sisolesk mask mandate to keep Nevada safe. Now normally, this is the part of the introduction when I would tell you where the bathrooms are, who to see to get your parking validated, and how to check out our local art show. None of those things are gonna be relevant to you during this concert series. You're probably in your own home, so you know exactly where the coffee is. However, I do wanna remind you that our Sweet Vibrations concert series is supported by your generous donations. Your gifts go to cover uh, all of the costs of opening the building and support the artists. As you might imagine, it's a slow time for live performances, so we are encouraging you to be extra generous if you can this year. You can donate online through the Facebook page donate button, or you can visit our website, renofirstmethodist.org, and click donate now. If giving online isn't your thing, you can write us a check, Reno First UMC, put sweet vibrations in the memo line and send it to us at 209 West First Street, Reno, Nevada, 89501. Because we're premiering this concert live on Facebook, you're all gonna be watching this show at the same time. You can chat together, send thumbs up and hearts to the artists, and you may even be able to ask the artists your questions and get some great answers. After the show, stick around and click on the link in the comments section to jo join an after party on Zoom, where you can interact through video conference with your fellow fans. Finally, we wanna say a special thanks to our Reno First UMC music director, Andy Sonnemaker, who's done such an excellent job coordinating all of the rehearsals and recording sessions and artists under extraordinary circumstances, to the whole Sweet Vibrations team here at Reno First, and to Ben Gallagher, who has spent countless hours recording, editing, animating, and producing these concert videos. In fact, this concert was recorded at 9 p.m. on Monday, and Ben stayed up all night to turn it around for us to show on Tuesday evening. What a man. Without any further ado, I'm proud to introduce a diverse group of bell ringers dedicated to art, fun, expression, fun, the color green, and fun. It's the Tin Tab Chamber Ringers.
Hello, my name is Ben Brown, and this is the Tin Tabulations Chamber Ensemble presenting The Show Must Go On, a theme we actually chose way back in January as the fall of Tin Tabulations Ensemble when we had no clue just how appropriate that theme was going to be. You see, back then we were 15 members, we were planning on a big tour through Nevada, we we're going to play a showcase concert in Vegas, and we we're going to end with our big old Art Town concert back in Reno. Now we're an octet. Many of those still able to meet, limited in size by the need to socially distance during rehearsal, who's spent months preparing for one concert, the one you're about to watch. Now, we do hope that someday we'll be able to perform again as the full Tim Tabulations Handball Ensemble. We encourage you to follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, Twitter, or just go to our website and join our mailing list. But for today, the show must go on. The show must go on is not what I was thinking. <laughs> my name is Michelle Powers, and my show must go on moment involved my youngest son. He is um, very involved in theater, and um, it was one of those theater nights. And he tells me, we, we, we need to go to a show. I've got to be there by 6 o'clock, or the call time is 6 o'clock. And I'm like checking my watch going, oh, so then we should have gone now in, in order to be there on time. And then he says, oh, and by the way, we need to go by the store to get some hair product, uh, some foam, whatever. He needed to slip back, slick back his hair or whatever. And um, so I looked at my watch again and I said, oh, so then we should have been there. We should have left 10 minutes ago in order to be there on time. So now we're in a hurry. So we, we get into the car, we get to the store, he gets his hair product, he gets back in the car, we get back on the road. And he takes the product out of the bag and he starts fiddling with it. And I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing? And then he says, mom, this doesn't seem to be working. And then psh, I get the gift of hair foam all over my car, my steering wheel, myself. And there's dead silence as we are both wondering what I'm going to say next. The show must go on. <laughs>
Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I'm an elementary music teacher. One year I had a student with special needs who was very interested in microphones. I discovered his interest while gearing up for our grade level concert. After each song, he would come up to the microphone and sing. This was huge because he was mostly nonverbal. At each subsequent practice, I gave him time with the microphone either before or after. Then comes the day of the concert. He has his chance to be on the microphone before and is not interested. But of course, as soon as that concert starts after each song, he is there and singing the song into the microphone. We continue along until the final song where he heads for the tallest microphone and steps up to pull it back towards him and step into an in instrument. I step in to intercept, remove the microphone and safety hazard from him so that he is safe disaster averted. But I forgot there was the instrument behind me. I stepped back, tripped on the instrument, down I went in front of all my parents and students. The parents were very, very concerned about me. I was very, very concerned about the instrument. I'm so happy to say both of us were okay and the show went on. Hi, my name is Teresa, and I think as musicians, we always get to see Murphy's Law in action uh, in person. For example, <laughs> I've been hired to play at a pit orchestra for a musical. Now, a pit orchestra is where they take all the musicians, they cram them in like sardines, and they put them in a hole in the front of the stage. And normally, <laughs> normally this keeps us well out of the action, but uh, in this instance, the first half of the musical ended with a big all hands on deck. Um, song and dance number, and it featured <laughs> uh, a bunch of rolling skateboards with giant trees tied to them that the cast would move back and forth across the um, stage. Well, okay, the, the song ended in a big bang, and the curtains came down, and one of the trees got uh, thrown by the curtain into the pit, where it took out, I think, our keyboard player and our drum set player in one fell swoop. 
So <laughs> Murphy's Law, um, and the show must go on. So we had a really long intermission We uh, for concussion checks. We finished the show, but I have to admit, after that, I was only keeping one eye on the conductor because the other eye was kind of where the stage edge was. Hello, my name is Melanie, and when I was a sophomore in high school, our marching band went to a competition in Las Vegas. On our way there, as most of the members were sleeping, a friend and I were chatting when we heard a scraping sound along the side of our charter bus. Turns out, our driver was passing a semi as another semi was passing us on a two-lane highway. The scraping sound turned out to be the driver's mirrors coming off as well as scraping the side of the bus. Luckily, no one was injured and our driver kept us cool. To our surprise, 
The next day at the competition was our best show of the season. Hi, my name is Diane. Um, ten plus years ago, in Northern California, in a little town called Kings Beach, we were playing on a patio that was um, uneven stonework. We thought we had everything leveled very carefully. About halfway through the concert, all of a sudden, the table that I was playing at started to drop. I quickly lifted my leg and braced the end of the table. Luckily, we were almost done with that song so that I didn't have to stand like a crane for very long. The show must go on. Thank you. 
my name is Sam. Marching band is kind of the epitome of the show must go on, because you have to play outside in any weather. Rain, snow, hot, cold, hail, you name it, I've played in it. I remember one show in particular, my junior year of college. We had been invited to be the exhibition band at a high school band festival. So we would be the last band to play after the competition was over. Sort of an encore, if you will. Well, as the stereotype goes, it was a dark and stormy night. The rain came down in sheets, and it only grew more intense as our show went on. Further confounding things was the fact that we had decided to show off our replicas of the Buckingham Palace guard uniform. So we were performing without our warm, dry raincoats. Those tall, black, furry hats acted much like a weather vane in the howling wind. It was even more fitting because our show that year was Monty Python. But you know what? Despite our sodden wool uniforms and frozen fingers, I think it was the best show we gave all season. Hello, this is Ben Brown again, and my story is about one of the few times the show almost didn't go on. It was going to be all my fault. You see, we were touring down in LA, and we arrived at a venue to find that our bells were stuck. They were in Diane's truck under a shell, and that shell wouldn't open. So in my attempt to extricate those bells, 
I pressed a button on that shell, which locked it. Now this was a problem because the only key to the shell was back in Reno. Oops. So we were a bit panicked. I was sitting there trying to figure out how we were going to call a locksmith. Others were trying to pry the shell off the truck. But one of our members just said, does anyone have a hairpin? Because they were going to try to lock pick this thing open like they were in some sort of campy TV show. Well, to my absolute shock, they had that thing open in less than a minute. Amber, I don't know what you did before you joined Tentabulations. I assume you were in some sort of high-powered criminal organization that encouraged you to turn yourself in to the proper authorities. But today, I would like to thank you. Amber, if it wasn't for your criminal acumen, the show wouldn't have gone on. So thanks again. Hello, I'm Linda and as a retired veterinarian, most of my stories relating to our theme of the show must go on involve animals. My family lives in a rural area in Nevada and we frequently get to share our lives with an assortment of wildlife. A few years back, a skunk ventured into our house through the doggy door in the middle of the night. It was not a pretty ending for the skunk but the poor creature did exert a powerful revenge on the dogs, our house, my husband, my teenage daughter, and myself. As we soon learned, there's not enough tomato juice or any other known concoction to put a dent in the odor that emanated from our little part of the world. But life goes on just as the show must go on. And our family initiated socially distancing practices long before the rest of the world.
Thank you for joining us today for our concert, The Show Must Go On, Part 2. We are very appreciative to be included in the Sweet Vibrations concert series hosted by Reno First United Methodist Church. I'm going to take a minute and talk about how you can support Tin Tab Chamber Ringers and this concert series. If you are able, donations are greatly appreciated, and donations can be made through the Reno First United Methodist Facebook page. To support Tin Tab Chamber Ringers, and to get a little handbell swag, you can head over to our website and you will find a link to buy some merchandise such as t-shirts or face masks, as well as our music. You can find our CDs on most of your normal sites, Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, and Google, as well as on our website. My name is Elizabeth, and thank you for engaging virtually with, uh, virtually with us today and your continuous support. Hi, my name is Barb Walsh, and one of our Tin Tap traditions has been to attend a yearly handbell festival in Las Vegas. Nearly 21 years ago, it was held in a school, uh, Las Vegas Academy for the Arts gym, and we helped set up the tables, and some of those tables were not in great shape. I can't remember which piece it was, but there was a contrasting section with sudden loud marks 
that's where you take the bell and you put it into the table. Our clinician had to keep encouraging us to play those marks with more energy. During the dress rehearsal, uh, Tess, at the end of the table, um, put a lot more energy into her marks. Unfortunately, the old table legs at that end of the table buckled and the tabletop tilted down, making the bells roll towards the floor. Tess hung on to her bells and stuck her foot out to slow the table's descent. I threw my arms across the width of the table to keep as many bells as possible from rolling onto the gym floor. Ben's quick flex, reflexes and tendency to be a bell hog uh, saw him scooping up a bunch of bells at his end of the table. Believe it or not, not one of those borrowed bells touched the floor. Remarkably, since we were in the back, only one other bell group noticed the disaster and the rest of the groups kept right on ringing. I didn't think even the clinician even noticed until she said in passing, good reflexes and good save. She is a great example of the show must go on. Thank you so much for coming to the concert. I want to say a big thanks to Pastor Chris and to Ben for putting this all together and for having the courage to continue on. The show must go on with Art Town. And I really want to say thank you to all of the, my teammates. Um, it was wonderful to be able to share our gift of music with everyone. Thank you.